Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a very, very warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. Sorry I wasn't around last week. Um, uh, took a week off as it was my uh, anniversary, so um, had to spend time with the missus. But um, but yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you uh, like this uh, the analysis that I do pretty much nearly every week. Um, again, it will really really help. It's a free way to support the channel as well and gets the quality content out there for those that really really need it. So um, let's get into the uh, uh, the week ahead and see what is going on. So week ahead, zooming into tradingeconomics.com. Uh, Great website. So week ahead, investors will be keeping an eye on the ISM manufacturing, uh, PMI and PCE inflation and the development surrounding Chinese real estate developer Evergrande. Right, that's important. Inflation um, is important because it drives monetary policy as well as manufacturing and PMI um, are, are really kind of related to uh, gross domestic product. Uh, Fed Chair Powell will testify on coronavirus and the uh, and CARES Act before the Senate and lawmakers will try to pass a funding plan to avoid a government shutdown on October the 1st, which is just around the corner. Of course, they're going to pass, um, you know, a funding plan. They're never going to let the, uh, uh, the US... Um, uh, you know, not fund <clears throat> uh, the CARES the CARES Act. Um, also, two days uh, ECB forum on central banking should give more clues on the monetary policy outlook, and it's really important that we, as forex traders, understand um, the driving forces behind um, cent uh, behind you know central bank monetary policy, because ultimately that is what is driving price in the medium to long term. Um, so that's worth a watch and traders will also pay attention to the outcome of the German federal election. So that's again a risk off event that is uh, coming up um, this week. So getting now into the uh, a bit more in-depth fundamentals and uh, technical analysis and let's start off on the dollar index. Dollar index. Um, <clears throat> You know, last week, uh, obviously, I wasn't I wasn't around, but um, uh, really, they were saying the week before that and in previous weeks that the path of least resistance is probably to the upside, and the dollar index is just a measure of uh, dollar strength against uh, various other currencies like the euro, the pound, the yen mainly, and um, again. I've been calling it right. I've been calling it down here. We've been calling it, in fact, from all the way back here when the Federal Reserve, you know, was was getting really hawkish. We were saying that literally, what you want to do is look to just buy, you know, the the, the the dollar overall, right? Not necessarily against every single currency uh, currency pair, but overall, the rumor is is that they're looking to potentially, you know, hike rates and uh, talking about hiking rates. Uh, recent FOMC, you know, events, the Federal Reserve left monetary policy unchanged, but there is a clear intent to dial back stimulus this year. And that's, again, positive for a currency or should appreciate a currency. QE tapering is set to be announced in November with the committee shifting towards a 2022 rate rise. So the, the monetary policy is doing everything to appreciate the currency, which is the reason why you're seeing, if we go back, you're seeing this is being priced in, right? The dollar index is going higher not because there is some sort of pin bar against the level of demand. It's not about technical analysis to that, that predicts direction. What predicts direction in the medium to long term is fundamental analysis. It's not Elliott Wave, it's none of that nonsense. Technical analysis is not a predictor, not a great predictor of what future price is going to is where it's going to go, right? In the medium to long term. It's fundamental analysis because this is what is driving you know the currency. Is understanding what the central banks are doing um, uh, uh, to appreciate or depreciate their currency, right? With inflation looking less and less transitory, we continue to expect liftoff in September 2022. So liftoff being a potential rate, the, the first rate hike uh, 
um, next year. We're in September now, end of September, so about a year from now. So taper's coming soon, and then comes the hike. So um, again, just understanding what the, what the dollar index is. Uh, so what you want to do is really just look for overall dollar. Uh, you know, if you're if you are looking to trade this, um, you know, the dollar is look for confluences with regards to demand zones and other currency pairs. So if the dollar starts to, for example, starts to pull back a little bit into a demand zone and then you get a nice demand zone, let's say, for example, on the dollar yen or the dollar Swiss, or dollar CAD, for example, or supplies on, on the dollar CAD, um, uh, actually, no, sorry, demands on, on dollar CAD, um, then you want to look for, uh, you know, just, just confluences by trades, right? These are the areas that you're looking for uh, confluences. So for me, the path of least resistance is still to the upside. I'm not saying that it's going to go up this, you know, this, this week. Nobody knows in the short term, but over the medium to long term, any pullbacks, I think, are continued buying opportunities. If you are looking for any kind of short term uh, reaction, um, and, and maybe trading that pullback. I don't know why you would, but um, you know, traders will trade anything um, in any direction. Um, technical traders do anyway. Uh, but this is actually quite a really nice area for you know a bit of a pullback. So again, you wouldn't necessarily trade this. The the, the, the dollar index, the DXY. You would look for short trades on um, any kind of dollar crosses. Um, and also as well, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about before we go into the next um, uh, 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 currency pair is is um, is on my community tab is understanding you know the language as well. It's really important that you look at language and what is what is happening when you read the news. Um, so what does it mean? I said I put out a poll which says what does it mean when the central bank indicates they are tightening monetary policy. Right, and they intend to hike rates to seventy four percent. They intend to cut rates to twenty six percent. The seventy four percent, the majority of you uh, have do have it right. Tightening actually means that they are looking to uh, hike rates. And again, what does hiking rates mean, right, for a currency? And if we scroll down a little bit more, um, I have it here. About two months ago, I put if a central bank is hiking rates. The demand for that curry currency should typically increase over the medium to long term, true or false. A lot of you guys said true, 91% said true. And again, that's pretty much what has been happening, right? That's exactly what's been happening on the dollar. From back in June 15th, 16th, around that time, when the Fed said that they are looking to high rates, look at what's happened with the dollar index. And really, again, it's just a race it's a race um, with the central banks to kind of hike rates, right? The, 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 the currencies, the, bank, the central banks that are not hiking rates just yet are gonna really be left behind. So here is a, an article which uh, talks about on the um, uh, Financial Times, and then to super cheap money, central banks begin tightening cycle, tightening. That key word again, right? They're looking to appreciate their currency. So no longer a central bank seeking to do whatever they can to ensure money is available for households, companies, governments to borrow at exceptionally favorable rates, basically cheap money. Along with Norway's monetary policy, or sorry, monetary tightening, the first in any advanced economy since the pandemic began. Four emerging economies, central banks, Pakistan, Hungary, um, Paraguay and Brazil, also raised uh, cost of borrowing this week, while the Federal Reserve and Bank of England both signalled a move towards tightening monetary policy, right? So the central banks are tightening, right? And I, uh, I went over this a couple of weeks ago, I think it might have been in, in the last um, weekly uh, analysis video uh, or the week before that, where um, this is a diagram uh, by ING, which um, uh, gives what they think are basically a central bank forecast regarding rates, right? So European Central Bank, they're looking to, they, um, ING think they're, uh, they're looking to potentially reduce um, their uh, PEPP and APP boosted um, QE um, uh, monetary policy. But if you look at, for example, the Federal Reserve, the tapering starts, tapering ends in quarter uh, 2022, and they're looking to hike rates, right? So arrow up means hike rates. European Central Bank, they don't think the European Central Bank is going to hike rates any time, you know, within the next uh, couple of years, right? Bank of England, again, looking to potentially the forecast that they're looking to hike rates in the fourth quarter of 2022, right? Of course, things can change, 
yeah um, but for now that's you know data has to support the narrative Bank of Canada high um, potentially hiking rates you know um, in the next year right so um, the point is is that if you understand the language and what tightening means you can start to read these articles and then understand what it's actually telling you yeah and then what you do is you look for the currency and the central banks that are looking to tighten first high rates first versus the currencies that are not and the central banks that are not that's pretty much how it works so let's get into um, spent enough time on that i guess the dollar looking at dollar yen technical wise again we've seen uh, positive uh, dollar appreciation into a nice zone i think that if you if you really want to get involved in this you have to wait for pretty much a pull back into this demand zone before this 10939 area before looking at getting uh, long but right now again in even in the face of what I've been talking about, there are still traders that are going to want to get short. And if you do want to get short, um, that area there is okay. Just realize that that level has been touched several times. Before. So um, it may it may not you know hold. The, the more times the level is touched, um, the more uh, it's open to a manipulation, right? Above that area there where all the stops pre pretty, pretty much are, right? I think from a technical analysis perspective, I do like this area here. Um, if there was any kind of short trades the Japanese yen benefits from a risk off environment meaning when there's lots of fear uncertainty and doubts so for example if there's lots of fear and uncertainty coming into the market let's say Evergrande um, you know starts to really kind of pick up and um, across the globe and trade and traders are fearful then actually in fact this area does look like a really nice area to look for potential shorts because you should see money flow into the Japanese yen which is a safe haven currency if not further higher dollar swiss pretty much very similar to the uh, dollar yen in terms of uh, fundamentals again if you're looking at understanding where money is flowing into and out of the path of these resistance should be the up to the upside until or unless there is um uh, a lot of for example uh, risk off sentiment and if there is risk off sentiment then you should the path of these resistance would be to the downside right because money is going to be flowing into the uh, Swiss franc rather than the dollar even though the dollar does act in fact as a safe haven currency um, and can act as a safe haven currency but generally you would see money flow into the uh, the Swiss franc so that's where we are with that. If you do want to get uh, short, I think that's going to be a decent area to look for any kind of short trades um, into that supply zone area right there. So if you do get a pullback and again, there's some sort of uh, uh, risk off sentiment, then that's a decent short. But other than that, I think any pullbacks into these daily demand zones are going to be buying opportunities. Moving on to the dollar CAD, dollar CAD. Um, technically, I really, really like this trade. Didn't take it though. Um, as it wasn't really in my uh, um, in my uh, list of uh, currencies to, to really kind of trade, but really really great technical setup um, that we had seen in, in the group, and we've been looking at this for uh, weeks now. So I'm not too sure if many people took it because fundamentally it's two competing currencies, but um, really nice uh, uh, short trade there, and uh, ultimately just understanding which way you want to be uh, looking to trade again you've got two central banks that are looking to potentially hike rates at some point so um it's it's a harder buy or sell right it's harder to predict where you know price will go you, what you want to see is a divergence right divergence meaning that you've got a central bank that's hiking and one that is potentially cutting or even holding rates right holding rates there's a divergence there between that and that. That's that's what you're looking for when it comes to understanding where currencies price movement should go. So with that being said, you've got two central banks that are potentially looking to high rates. Where's the divergence, right? There's no divergence there. So for me, uh, I stay out of those types of uh, um, uh, currency pairs, but technically decent buy and a decent sell if you're looking at those zones. New Zealand dollar, um, <clears throat> again New Zealand dollar is probably going to be one of the first to look to potentially high crates uh, hence the reason why you've seen this massive move over the past few you know weeks or just a month or so um, come down into a nice you know demand zone there pull back a little bit for me again it's not really a pair I'm looking to you know trade so much there are better 
pairs to buy against uh, the uh, New Zealand, or sorry, sell against the New Zealand dollar. So, um, but if you are looking at getting uh, long on this currency pair, here's a decent zone to try and look for long trades, or even better would be the zone below it. Um, or you're looking at the absolute low of that range, which I think would be brilliant for a, a potential buy. Um, and I say brilliant, but in a sense that, um, I think this would be an absolute bargain for the uh, New Zealand dollar, um, even though the US dollar is looking to potentially um, hike rates too. I don't, I can't see uh, this really going down too much further beyond that 0 0.68 level. So that's uh, decent for a potential buy if we ever get down there. Pound dollar, pound dollar is very interesting. In fact, again, we've got two um, currencies that are potentially looking to hike rates, right? We've got the pound and we've got uh, what the Bank of England this week came out and said that they were looking to, again, tightening. That word again, tightening, hike rates. Yeah, but rate, uh, rate, but rate hike still some way off, right? So banks, what they tend to do is they want to talk up or talk down their currency, right? So at the moment, in order to, um, uh, to get inflation down, they need to talk up their currency, they need to make their currency appreciate, right? So I think right now the, um, the Bank of England are talking up their their um, uh, their, their pound and, um, but uh, again in this, uh, the analysis from ING is that they think that given the headwinds or the number of headwinds facing the economy this winter, we think a rate hike is unlikely until the second half of 2022, later than investors are expecting. So what really are the headwinds, right? The headwinds at the moment are, uh, we've got currently panic buying, we've got supply chain problems, petrol shortages, um, we've got also um, energy crisis at the moment. So energy suppliers, Avro and Green cease trading. Um, <laughs> you know, we've got um, shortage of CO2 as well. So um, in the UK, there there are there are some issues and problems, right? Facing, you know, gas shortages, hits UK food, um, HGV vehicle, a driver shortage uh, for supermarkets. There's a lot of things um, going against uh, the pound at the moment. So although the central bank might say they're looking to high crates at some point, um, I think in the short term, I think in the short term, the pound actually might be a potential uh, short, right? Or any kind of shorts if prices come back up into this area here, which is gonna be where the next uh, supply zone is around there. I do think that the, uh, the pound in, in the short term anyway is I think a short until um, we do sort out our um, our problems as far as you know we get over these uh, these crises and shortages um, I think the pound is definitely there will then be a buy but for now I think um, my, my bias I think is actually to the short side for the pound and I think there's a great opportunity is it against the pound dollar that would be one of the pairs that I would start to short, but I'd look for a, a technical setup before looking at getting short. If you think that the market is going to um, to, to kind of ignore a lot of the risk of sentiment, local risk of sentiment um, for the UK, then I think in fact anything below this one, I think it's 135 area, 13550 is actually a really, really good zone to look for any kind of buying opportunities. But for now, I think the path of resistance is to the short side, but um, getting involved in that for now, I think you know you'd have to wait for quite a deep pullback, about two hundred pip pullback, or if prices make lower lows, lower highs, basically a pullback into that zone, and then something like that. Um, moving on to the euro, the euro is the laggard at the moment. So um, again, proof is in the pudding, right? We understood, and and the guys in the group, all in my private mentoring group in the Discord group all understood why they should really have been getting short on the euro um, and uh, you know this is pretty much what has been happening so um, it's just really kind of pullbacks to, um, uh, to, to, to supply zones right or areas um, on a price chart where you feel that uh, prices should want to reverse from and in fact I, uh, I did a video this week <clears throat> which was, um, I released it, I think it was yesterday. So Forex News Trading Masterclass, live FOMC, Euro dollar analysis and trade setup. And again, this was from um, a meeting I had on the Wednesday as FOMC was happening um, with my private members um, Discord group, which is basically right here. This is you know our, our, our group 
and I have a meeting every Wednesday with the guys and we go over you know fundamental analysis live um, and look at price and look at you know fundamental analysis right so what I did was I kind of shared this um, hour and a half long um, um, uh, webinar that I, that I had kind of just gave you kind of 22 minutes of it where I literally break down FOMC as it's happening and uh, the, the trade setup that occurred as well. This isn't hindsight bias. Everything that I actually said actually ended up happening. I'm not saying that I'm a genius or anything like that, but it's just if you understand how the markets work, you have probabilities on your side, right? You have the probabilities on your side. A good trade can lose and a bad trade can win. In this instance, good trade setup actually won, right? So it's a great example. A lot of traders will tell you, you know, think they know how to trade the news and typically what traders trade is, you know, they, 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 um, they don't understand, they FOMO in and they don't really understand how the market really works. In this video, if you don't understand how the market works, or even if you think you understand how the market works, this video will um, pretty much set you straight on really how the market actually does work, especially in the short term and how traders FOMO in and how to take advantage of that FOMO and how to really kind of trade the news uh, news events anyway so take a look at that after watching this um, and also as well just looking at the ECB again the theme being central bank is lonelier than ever um, after a hawkish turn led by the Fed right so the Federal Reserve are looking to hike rates but the, but the, um, but the uh, European Central Bank are lagging behind again going back to this um, central bank forecast on this line you don't see any rate hikes right there's no expectation from the banks that the European Central Bank are going to hike rates so so with central banks from Washington to London this week signaling um, more alarm over faster inflation the ultra stimulative path to of the eurozone and some of its neighbors appears lonelier than ever so they're really um, one of the few banks that are um, are lagging behind right so what it's basically saying is um, is that um, a collective uh, move to look beyond the pandemic slump and towards the risk uh, rising of accelerating prices emerged with a warning from the US Federal Reserve that it may taper bond buying programs soon and the prospect of higher interest rates as early as this year from the Bank of England, I don't know about this year, uh, and at least five other hikes from central banks around the globe. So they're talking about hiking there. That left a clear divergence. Again, divergence, that key word on policy with European central banks where officials are still largely more worried about supporting the fragile recovery. Yeah. So again, if you go back to the euro dollar, again, you're seeing that play out over time. Does that mean that in this, during this period of time, you know, that, you should have been getting short of course you should have been getting short no one's saying that the market's going to fall forever but you you know you look for areas supply zones right and just keep looking for those supply zones as long as the monetary policy hasn't changed just look for potential short trades because you're trading really the divergence yeah there's periods where you know um, the divergence isn't so clear right and it looks great in hindsight but the point is is that once you understand the divergence is there and it becomes a lot more clear, then it's just looking for those divergences when, you know, if there's ever a pullback into, you know, some sort of supply zone. So with that being said, European, the European Central Bank are lagging behind um, and uh, the path of these resistances probably still to the downside, not saying that it can't pull back this week or for the next couple of weeks. But if it does, I think overall, as long as the European Central Bank remain dovish and the data supports the narrative for the US Federal Reserve, we should continue to see, um, you know, uh, uh, short trades at potential supply zones. Um, but again, if you if there is a change in sentiment for the uh, Europe for, uh, for Europe, then actually, I think that these zones are going to be fantastic, a fantastic buy, right? Um, it's just you need the I think, well, I need anyway, I would like to see uh, a shift in the um, in Europe's uh, stance on when they're looking to potentially, you know, uh, taper QE and even talk about hike hiking rates and be a bit more hawkish and then I think I'm going to be I'm going to really switch my bias to buying the euro um, across the board really uh, looking at the euro yen again euro yen brilliant brilliant 
supply zone from a few weeks, I'm sorry, demand zone from a few weeks ago. Tough trade to take because there was a lot of risk off sentiment, but pretty much see what happens, what happened there. Really, really nice uh, demand zone. Uh, and um, I know a few traders in the group got involved in that. Really nice trade to the upside. Now looking at short trades, potentially if risk off sentiment comes into play, then those um, supply zones should be decent for uh, shorts. But again, you'd have to really kind of wait for risk off to uh, come into play. Aussie dollar, again, Aussie dollar, a bit of a strange one. Uh, Aussie is again lagging. I think the, um, the, uh, the US dollar is definitely uh, ahead of the uh, Australian dollar, the RBA. So again, any kind of pullbacks into supply zones is probably where the path of these resistance is gonna be. And, um, and yeah, I think that's probably where we are, the short trades in and around these areas, um, as long as the, uh, the the Fed stay hawkish and the market believes them, right? You're, you're, I think the Australian dollar is, um, is, uh, is, is definitely more dovish, but I do think that if prices come down to the 71 area, again, like the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, I think that actually might be a really good potential buy. Um, at least for a, for a few people, I'm saying it's going to reverse around here and go to the heavens. But just technically, it's a really nice trade. So any kind of um, opportunity to potentially buy around here actually might be decent. Um, uh, but again, a really kind of small position. Um, but again, poverty resistance probably more to the downside. Aussie yen again a pullback into um, uh, these demand zones probably didn't work. There was no demand there. Um, clearly, from the market again, there was lots of risk off this week on, and last week. But then you've had a bit of a bit of buying around here, so we do have a demand zone right there. So any pullbacks into these areas, if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, is to the upside. If it breaks through that, I think that again is going to be a really nice zone at the, at the absolute lows. Uh, looking for any kind of buyers on for the Japanese yen. And that's going to be where your first uh, supply zone is going to be. So I think, in fact, decent area, again, from a risk off perspective to get short there and potentially if that area doesn't work short there. But again, more looking at risk off sentiment rather than risk on um, if you're looking for short trades and gold. So gold um, has not really benefited from the uh, risk off sentiment. Um, I think more due to the Fed being a lot more uh, hawkish. Um, and again, the dollar and the yen, sorry, the dollar and the yen, the dollar and gold uh, work inverse, right? So understanding that if the Fed are more hawkish, then gold are gonna, gold is more likely to potentially start to go down, at least in the short term. And that's really because gold doesn't pay any yield, right? If the dollar are looking to hike rates from 0 0.25, potentially to, you know, 0 0.5, yeah? Just for holding dollars, 0.5%, yeah? Just for holding US dollars, you're gonna get a yield, which is what, you know, investors want. Whereas gold, you can hold gold, but it's really just a price appreciation. Um, so for now, if the coast is clear as well when it comes to risk sentiment, um, investors probably really haven't got really a need to hold gold. Also as well, um, you've got bonds, right? Government treasury bonds. So government bonds again are is 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 um, uh, is also a safe haven asset. And again, if bonds, treasury bonds are paying out um, uh, on, on a yield, right after inflation, then that's also going to take away. Um, uh, gold's allure for now until there's some sort of risk off event potentially or the US don't do so well from an economic perspective so technically I do like this area in fact I'll probably say a deeper area and just probably below that area if we can get some sort of a stop hunt around there that would be really nice for a, for a really good buy I think And uh, but if you're looking to short gold first area into that 1764 area to look for potential short trades if you're looking to um if you think that you know the dollar should want to strengthen in the future anyways guys that's it for this week don't forget to like subscribe and share and um yeah take care 
and hope you have a great trading week. All the best.